so what were the earliest cities let us start with the story of harappa very often the old buildings they tell their own story they have their own story to tell nearly 150 years ago when railway lines were being laid down for the first time in the uh, in the punjab engineers stumbled upon the site of harappa which is at present in pakistan to to them it seemed like a mound that was a rich source of ready made uh, high quality bricks so they carried off thousands of brick from the walls of the old building of the city to build the railway lines so many buildings were completely destroyed at that time then about 80 years ago archaeologists found the site and they realized that this was one of the oldest cities in the subcontinent and as this was the first city to be discovered all other sites from where the similar buildings or other things were found were described as harappan or harappan so these cities developed about 4700 years ago 4700 years ago so what was so special about these cities why you might have heard about harappa you know various times many of these cities they were divided into two or more parts first thing is this the part of the west was smaller but higher archaeologists described this as the citadel generally the part of the east was larger but lower this was called as the lower town and very often walls of baked brick was built around each part so the brick were were so well made that they were lasted or they have lasted for thousands of years 4700 years ago it was so the bricks were laid in an interlocking pattern and that made the walls pretty strong in some cities special buildings were constructed on this citadel for example in mohanjodaro a very special tank which archaeologists call them the, this has great bath was built in this area so this was lined with bricks coated with plaster and made water tight with layer of natural tar so there were steps leading down to it from from two sides while there were rooms on all the sides water was probably brought in from a well and drained out after use perhaps most important uh, people took a dip in this tank on auspicious special occasions so other cities uh, such as kalibangan and lothal they had fire altars where their sacrifices may have been performed and some cities like mohanjodaro harappa and lothal they had elaborate store houses so if you see where we are talking about first let me take you to the these the cities were found in the punjab and sindh in pakistan in gujarat haryana rajasthan and punjab in india so archaeologists have found a set of unique objects in almost all the cities first is red pottery which is painted with design in black stone weights seals special beads copper tools and long stone blades these are the earliest cities of subcontinent mohanjodaro harappa kalibangan rakhi gadi ganveri wala chanudaro dholavira surkotda lothal these were all the earliest cities in the subcontinent this was the great bath we are talking about where the eminent people would take dip on special occasions you see the formation of this it was 4700 years ago and at that time these bricks they were as fine as they are today and the formation if you see they are properly managed and built properly in a well planned manner houses drain and streets so generally houses were either one or two stories high with room built around a courtyard most houses had a separate bathing area and some had wells to supply water many of these cities 
had covered drains had covered drains how carefully these were laid out if you see they are all are in straight lines so there is a proper pattern being followed although you cannot see it each drain had a gentle slope so that water could flow through it and very often drains in houses were connected to those on the streets and smaller drains lead to into bigger ones and as the drains were covered inspection holes were provided at intervals to clean them all three houses drains and streets they were probably planned and built at the same time these are how bricks were arranged to build walls in harappan city c the formation is so well structured and well formulated how was the life in this city so the harappan city was very busy place it was very busy place there were people who planned the construction of special building in the cities and if you see the drains we are talking about these are the drains so there were people who planned the construction of special buildings in the city and these were probably the rulers it is likely that the rulers sent people to distant land to get metal precious stone and other things that they wanted they may have kept the most valuable objects such as ornaments of gold and silver or beautiful beads for themselves and there were scribes people who knew how to write who helped prepare the seals and perhaps wrote on the materials that have not survived and besides there were men and women craft persons making all kind of things either in their home or special workshops so people were traveling to distant land or returning with raw material perhaps uh, stories so many terracotta toys have been found and a long time ago children must have played with these so if you see here a street this is a street in mohanjo daro with proper drainage system here it is a well and if you see here this is a harappan seal it was a seal the the seal we use today the signs on the top of this seal are part of a script so this is the earliest form of writing known in this subcontinent scholars have tried to read these signs but we still do not exactly what they mean these are the terracotta toys children used to play with them new crafts in the city so let us have a look at some of the objects that were made and found in harappan Harap cities most of the things that have been found by archaeologists are made of stones shell and metal including copper bronze gold and silver so copper and bronze were used to make tools weapons ornaments and vessels gold and silver were used to make ornaments and vessels perhaps the most striking find or what was discovered are those of beads weights and blades so the harappan also made seals out of stone they are generally rectangular and it really have a animal carved on them as i just showed you the harappan also made pots with beautiful black designs such as the one you you saw just now so cotton was probably uh, grown at uh, mehargarh from about 7000 years ago actual pieces of cloth were found attached to the lid of a silver vase and some copper objects at mohanjodaro so here if you see these are stone weights how carefully and precisely these weights are shaped please see them these were made of shirt a kind of stone and these were probably used to weigh precious stones or metals here we have beads many of these were made out of carnelian a beautiful red stone the stone was cut shaped polished and finally a hole was bored through the center so that a string could be passed through it and these are stone blades and if you see this is the uh, embroidered cloth a stone statue of an important man found from mohanjodaro he is wearing this see he is wearing an embroidered garment it's a proper garment being embroidery has embroidery on it so faience unlike stone or shell they are found naturally faience is a material 
uh, that is artificially produced. A gum was used to shape sand and powder cords into an object. So the object were then glazed, resulting in a very shiny and glassy surface. So the colors of this glaze were usually blue or sea green. Faience was used to make beads, bangles, earrings, and tiny vessels. So as we were saying, archaeologists have also found spindle walls and made of terracotta and faience. They were used to spin the threads. They were used to spin the these threads. So many of things that were produced were probably the work of specialist. A specialist is a person who is trained to do certain kind of work. For instance, cutting stone or polishing beads or carving seals. So we have various illustrations here to see how well the face is carved and how carefully the beard is made of the previous uh, picture I showed you with the embroidered uh, dress. So this must have been the work of an expert craftsperson. Not everybody could have been a specialist. We don't know whether only men were specialists or only women were specialists. Perhaps some women or men may have been specialists. So when we are in search of raw material, raw materials are those substances that are either found naturally like wood or ores of metal or they are produced by farmers or herders. So these are then processed to produce finished goods. For instance, cotton uh, produced by farmers is a raw material that may be processed to make clothes. So while some of the raw materials that the Harappans used were available locally, many items like the copper, tin, gold, silver and the other precious stones that had to be bought from distant places. The Harappan probably got copper from present day Rajasthan and even from Oman, Oman in uh, West Asia. So let me take you back and show you that these Harappans, they have something locally and some they bought even from the foreign land. That is West Asia. Tin, which was mixed with copper to produce bonds, may have been brought from present day Afghanistan and uh, Iran. Gold could have come all the way from present day Karnataka and precious stone from present day Gujarat, Iran and Afghanistan. So how Beautiful this is, how were goods carried from one place to another? This is an illustration. So one shows a, a toy and the other is a seal. So can you uh, just see that these were only being made because that those things were actually going on there. So food uh, from for people in the cities. So while many people lived in the cities, other living in the countryside, they grew crops and reared animals. So these farmers and herders, they supplied food to craft persons, scribes and rurals in the cities. So we know from the remains of plant that the Harappans grew wheat, barley, pulses, peas, rice, sesame, lime seed and mustard. A new tool, the plow, uh, was used to dig the earth for turning the soil and planting seeds. While real plows, which were probably made of wood, have not survived, toy models have been found. So this is an example of toy ploy. And uh, today in many farming communities, only men plow. We don't know whether Harappans follow such customs or not. So as this region uh, does not receive heavy rainfall, some form of irrigation may have been used. This means that the water are stored and supplied to the field when the plants were growing. The Harappans reared cattle, sheep, goat, buffalo. Water and pastures were available around settlement. However, in the dry summers, summer month, large herd of animals, they were probably taken to great distance in search of grass and water. So they also collected the fruits like uh, the cucumber you can say or caught fish and hunted wild animals like this, like the antelopes. So if, if we have a closer look, and this closer look, Harappan towns in Gujarat, let me show you this picture first. So city of uh, Dhola Veera was located at Hadir Bed in the run of Kutch, where there was fresh water and fertile soil. So like some of the other Harappan cities, which were divided into two parts, this Dhola Veera was divided into three parts. 
Each part was surrounded with massive stone walls, with entrance through the gateways. And there was also a large open area in the settlement where public ceremonies could be held. Other finds uh, include large letters of Harappan script that were carved out of white stones and perhaps uh, inlaid in wood. So this is a unique, unique find as generally Harappan writing has been found on small objects like the seals. So the city of Lothal stood beside a tributary of Sabarmati in Gujarat, close to the Gulf of Khambar. It was situated near areas where raw materials such as semi-precious stone were easily available. This was an important center for making objects out of stone, shell and metal. So there was also a storehouse in the city. Many seals and ceilings, that is the impression of the seals on clay, were found in their storehouse. So a dockyard, if you see at Lothal, this is a huge tank. There may have been a dockyard where boats and ships uh, come in from sea and through river channels. Uh, goods were probably loaded and unloaded here. So a building was found here was probably a workshop for making beads, piece of stones, half made beads, tool for bead making and finished beads have all been found here. So this is an example of seals and ceilings that was being found. So seals may have been used to stamp bags or packets containing goods that were sent from one place to another. After a bag was closed or tied, a layer of wet clay was applied on the knot and the seal was pressed on it. The impression of the seal is known as a ceiling. So the ceiling was intact. One could be sure that the goods have arrived safely and there is no uh, you know, checking being done or uh, foul play being done earlier. So the mystery of the end. Around 3900 years ago, we find the beginning of major change. People stopped living in many of the cities. Writing seals and waves were not, no longer used. Raw materials bought from long distance become rare. In Mohanjodaro, we find that garbage piled up on these streets, the drainage system broke down and new less impressive houses were built even over these streets. Why did this all happen? We are not sure about that. Some scholars suggest that the river dried up, others suggest that there, there were, was deforestation. This could have happened because fuel was required for baking bricks, for smelting copper ores. So besides grazing by a large herd of cattle, sheep and goat may have destroyed the green cover. So in some areas there were floods, but none of these reasons can explain the end of all the cities. Flooding or a river drying up would have had an effect only in some areas. So we have seen about city, citadel, ruler, uh, scribe, clerk person, metal, seal, specialist, raw material, flow and irrigation, especially with respect to the um, this uh, Mohanjodaro and Harappan. So it appears as if ruler, rurals they lost control. In any case, the effect of the change are quite clear. Sites in Sindh and West Punjab, which is in Pakistan today, were abandoned while many people moved into newer, smaller settlement to the east and the south. New cities they emerged after uh, about four hundred years later, which we talk about we'll talk about this later so what was happening elsewhere you know see you can find egypt in your atlas most of the egypt is a dry desert except for the lands along the nile river so around 500 years ago kings ruled over egypt these kings sent armies to distant land to get gold uh, silver ivory timber and precious stone they also built huge tombs these are known as pyramids. So when they died, the bodies of the king were preserved and buried in these pyramids. And these uh, carefully preserved bodies are known as mummies. A large number of objects were also buried with them. So these include food and drink and clothes and ornament, utensils, musical instruments, weapons and elements. Sometimes even uh, serving men and women were buried with rurals, uh, the, the people who were ruling there. So these are amongst the most elaborate burials which is known in world history.